Well, good evening. Um, welcome uh, to Greater Grace Church of Chester and Lesbian Ford. We're starting our, our evening Bible study uh, midweek service uh, for our church in Chester and Ellesmere Port. Um, if you are finding us for the first time, you can also uh, come and find us at ggechurch.co.uk and there on the website there's also a link to YouTube which is YouTube uh, Greater Grace Evangelical Church and there you can find uh, a few more of our messages and sermons if you uh, would like to subscribe. Tonight we'll be getting underway with a word of scripture. Um, we wish well done to the Welsh team as they uh, um, uh, did uh, well against Turkey tonight. Um, and uh, I'm not sure how many people will be able to, to tune in tonight because I know quite a few people are on holiday. Our school is on holiday as of this evening and I know some people were um, going away. So um, we are uh, open to whoever comes. If you are able to see us tonight and able to, to uh, hear us, please leave us a, a little message and a little acknowledgement. Uh, or a wave or a greeting so that we know that somebody can actually see us so uh, that's uh, that's always good to know that uh, so without further ado we'll pray and we'll put this um, time in God's hands and leave it up to him to see what happens tonight Heavenly Father we worship you tonight Lord we thank you uh, we want to lift up the name of our Lord Jesus Christ we want to tell forth your greatness your power your majesty your might your holiness your righteousness your gentleness your mercy your love your grace your peace your faithfulness tonight Lord we worship you and we thank you for everything that you've given us we thank you for everything that you've done for us Lord and we thank you Lord that you desire relationship with us and this is why we meet together in your name because you're a real God, you're a living God and you, you have a, a desire to meet with us and we have a desire to meet with you tonight fill us with your life, fill us with your spirit touch and anoint these times Lord we pray as we seek to open your words together and worship our God Bless this time now, Lord, we pray. We think of the convention coming up. Many of our friends will be there in America. And uh, Lord, we just pray that you bless that next week. We think of the events that are already going on. Um, and we, we just thank you, Lord, for that. We pray that you minister there also. Bless us tonight, Lord, we pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, so tonight um, we are uh, going to look at Matthew chapter 14 in a moment. Uh, a little reminder that uh, the uh, convention, our uh, ministries convention starts in Baltimore, Maryland um, next week on the Tuesday. So next week we won't be actually doing the, uh, a midweek service like this. What we're encouraging people is go to GG wo.org where you can find messages from the convention which will be on all week uh, there will be something for everyone uh, the times I think are going to be at 6 o'clock in the evening our time so slightly earlier than, than now and um, I think midnight but I'm sure there will be archived if you don't want to stay up till midnight you can, follow, you can watch them the following morning or however you whenever you have the time catch up as much as you can uh, it would be maybe nice for us if we could uh, meet together that following weekend and have uh, more of a day of it maybe we could even bring food we'll see if anyone is up for that idea uh, and stay around and watch a few services together uh, from the week uh, of convention so um, yeah we, we, can, we can talk about more on that at the weekend also, I'm afraid we have a notification from the Christian Institute that they are, are having uh, meetings by Zoom. Now, we haven't made a big thing of this because it is actually on the same week as our, our convention. So, uh, Tuesday the 22nd 
and Wednesday the 23rd of June um, they have uh, meetings in, in Stoke-on-Trent and Northwich but it is by Zoom only so if you would like to join with the Christian Institute uh, come and ask me for the details or message me for the details and I can um, send them to you uh, we have a, a flyer uh, from them I don't know whether you can see that just trying to get it into the camera there we go um, so um, if you would like uh, details on that come and see us um, but yes um, a lot of things going on this next week or so, so uh, um, and school holidays as well uh, but let's do this anyway let's read from Matthew's Gospel chapter 14 and we're going to read a few verses starting at verse 25 it says and in the fourth watch of the night Jesus went unto them walking on the sea and when the disciples saw him walking on the sea they were troubled saying it is a spirit and they cried out for fear but straight away Jesus spake unto them saying be of good cheer it is I be not afraid Peter answered him and said Lord if it be thou bid me come unto thee on the water and he said come and when Peter was come down out of the ship he walked on the water to go to Jesus but when he saw the wind boisterous he was afraid and beginning to sink he cried saying Lord save me and immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and called him and said unto him O thou of little faith wherefore didst thou doubt and when they were come into the ship the wind ceased then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him saying of a truth thou art the son of God okay wow. let's pray Heavenly Father we thank you Lord for these words we thank you for what we've just read thank you for this amazing story of your faithfulness Lord and we thank you for um, what it means for us tonight Lord fill us with your life fill us with your spirit touch those that need a special touch Lord we pray any that need touches of healing Lord uh, we uh, ask especially for uh, our friend Joyce Morley down in London for, uh, down at the afternoon as well in Pastor John's church for, for many of us who have had uh, health issues recently we pray for um, uh, Romanka as well Lord Prague and uh, also for Anna Titlow as well Lord uh, for that difficulty that uh, she has had Lord recently we pray that you'd, you'd heal and strengthen each one protect each one Lord uh, encourage us Lord we pray as well this season be with each uh, member of the body speak to hearts Lord tonight Minister life to us, Lord, we pray, as we meet together. Thank you, Lord, for life and fellowship. Thank you for opportunities to trust you and believe you and read your word. Fill us with your spirit. Anoint, Lord, we pray. We are nothing without you and we need your input, Lord, and we trust you and we worship you tonight in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, so uh, tonight, <laughs> yeah, a miracle, a famous miracle. In fact, it's probably one of those miracles that uh, even people who've never been to a church or don't know anything about God will probably know of that, of the miracles of Jesus. It's one of the miracles that actually uh, is uh, often mocked as well 
people sort of make fun of it, they sort of trivialise it, uh, but actually it, it's, uh, it is a, an incredible feat that Jesus accomplishes. Uh, but actually, yeah, one of those stories that's in three of the Gospels, ironically the one that's not in it's Luke, it is uh, usually, often you find with these, with the stories of, of Jesus' life, and miracles they are in you know the three what they call the three synoptic gospels uh, uh, Matthew Mark and Luke but then John is uh, is different John is a very personal account and, and uh, often the stories in John's gospel are different I always like to think that Do John sort of wrote uh, the book saying well there's all these other great stories in fact he more or less says that at the end of the book doesn't he? there's all these other great stories that we've missed out we haven't told and it's like it's about time somebody told those ones as well and um but actually john mentions this one um the one who doesn't is luke this time so uh john is in sync with the uh, uh with uh, the the other gospel uh writers this time he he tells this story but here in in Matthew we have an extra detail that the others don't supply and again it's quite a major detail it's quite a uh, a big difference to the, the, the story that the others don't manage to mention uh, but and that is Peter's inclusion in the miracle. Uh, I think it's important actually uh, for us to think about that because God is a God who loves to include us in miracles. Uh, I was reading this morning actually about the uh, the feeding of the 5,000 and you realize how much Jesus includes the disciples in it. It's like you know you know Peter, oh sorry Philip okay you guys go and help uh, clear up all of the, the scraps afterwards but actually they're, they're involved they're all involved in the miracle it's not just Jesus saying look here I'm doing a miracle and you can all watch he actually is very much uh, in, in, he involves them very much and says no we're, we're part of this and I, I like it here as well because um, Peter is included in this miracle uh, partly by his own prompting Peter asks to be included it's not like Jesus forcing him to take a step of faith that he he's not ready for Peter says please can I do this can I can I be involved in this as well and Jesus says, well yeah if you really want to yeah why not okay good you ready for it yeah come on go for it and, and he does he, he uh, he, he walks on the water as well. Wow. It's interesting as well this story because what do we see here? We see uh, fear replaced with cheer. Um, when it starts off, it says, you know, like, uh, oh, um, they see him, but they think he's a spirit, and they're fearful. Uh, and and Jesus says, no, be of good cheer. It's me. What are you afraid of? Uh, I know it, it's an unusual situation. People are afraid of the unknown, aren't they? Usually, people fear the unknown and people fear things that are different. You know, how did that happen? Why did it Why did that thing uh, end up there? You know, who moved that? Why, where? Is it? You know, it's like people say, uh, you know, I said, well, it's uncanny. Why did that happen? And it's People, uh, people are amazed by these things, but they're also uh, maybe a little bit fearful, uh, particularly if they think that the supernatural is involved. But actually, you know what? Jesus says, hey, no, it's me. I'm the one. I'm the supernatural one here. Um, you know, God puts on a very friendly face of the supernatural. It's like we hear, it. We hear, hear that a lot, don't we, the idea of the supernatural on the TV uh, 
there are whole channels these days on the digital channels that are devoted to, you know, ghost uh, adventures, ghost whisperers, ghost towns, ghost hospitals, ghost, ghost uh, political parties, ghost uh, um, A&E. You know, it's like uh, there's uh, more or less uh, uh, celebrity ghost special. Now there's there's all of these things about ghosts and the supernatural. It's all a bit oh, isn't it awful? Isn't it terrible and uh, uh, scary? And oh. you know what? It's like Jesus says, "No, this is me. I'm God and I'm supernatural. I'm I am uh, uh, more so than a any anything else is. But actually, it's me and I'm friendly. Uh, it's it's me. It's it's the Son of God." You know, the, mo the most uh, gentle, the most friendly, the most loving one that you could meet. So actually, don't be afraid. Be of good cheer. Now, this is God doing something amazing. This is not something to be fearful about. This is something to celebrate. Oh, but there's a storm, and it's terrible, and the wind's boisterous, and it's like, yeah, but you know what? God's in it. God's here. And God comes down, you know. You know, it's interesting as well because uh, sometimes a parent does something to bless a child, um, and occasionally we, we, the child is fearful of it. Have you ever seen that? You know, it's like the dad decides to dress up as Santa Claus or or the Easter Bunny or something like that, and then what happens? The child is traumatized by this hideous character that's turned up at the door and it's like or you know like they they oh we're gonna give you a surprise you know there's a surprise at the box and then somebody jumps out and it's like oh it's like, you know what it's like sometimes our god does something to bless us but we're afraid of it and very often we can actually be afraid of the things that god does in our life and it's like no actually god is doing it to bless us he's doing it for our joy he's doing it for our good cheer and actually, a lot of the things that happen in our life, even though they may not unsettle us or um, make us fearful or cause us to question things, actually, no, it's, uh, it's Jesus doing something to bless us. It's Jesus doing something to make us, uh, to make us smile. <laughs> you know, he wants, he wants us to celebrate. He wants us to see who he is. And he wants us to see his awesome power as well. That's another thing. It's like, hey, I'm, I'm the God who is able to do all things. And I want you to know that. And I want you to be confident in that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so often we're not convinced of his faithfulness. It's like, you know, oh, uh, I don't know what you're doing here, God. I don't know. Uh, you know, you see that with the disciples as well. Often they said, "Well, are you going to let me fail? Are you going to are you going to uh, allow this bad situation?" But no, God is faithful. God is faithful, and we have to trust Him. And we need to trust Him, and and He wants us to just trust Him completely. And it's like no, it's well. Think about that as well. Uh, in in Hebrews, it says uh, in uh, Hebrews chapter three. Um, verse twelve: Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Wow. It's like, hang on a minute, you know, doubting God, you know, it's like, oh, but it's just a, it's just my little fear, it's just my little, just my little uh, quibble, and it's like, no, actually, God, God, could God call us evil? Wow, an evil heart of unbelief, that, that's quite strong, actually, isn't it? Uh, to not believe God, what God's doing, to not have faith in what God is doing, uh, to not trust him. He's actually evil. Actually, ultimately, that is 
when you think of it, the reason that people go to hell is not because of the things that they've done, uh, not because they're terribly wicked people, but because they failed to trust the complete provision that the Lord Jesus Christ made, made for them when he went to the cross, when he died in their place. The only reason that people end up in hell is really because of that. Because they fail to trust the perfect provision that was made. This is the uh, this is very simple. But actually, yeah, an evil heart of unbelief. Wow. That's uh, it's quite shocking in one sense, but but it's true. Uh, James 1 it says uh, in verse 5 if any of you lack wisdom let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not and it shall be given to him wow we can ask anything you know that's amazing that's really good you know we can ask anything and, and, and God will give it it says but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Wow. Now we know that uh, it says more about that in Ephesians I think three, uh, where 314, I think it is where it says, uh, talks about the uh, uh, no longer tossed around uh, and tossed around like uh, by every wind of doctrine but yeah but here uh, like a wave tossed around by the sea we're wavering because we're a wave that's what waves do they waver and I was uh, at the sea yesterday and uh, I watched I tried to take a picture I'm not sure whether it really came out very well there was a tiny crab uh, and uh, I watched it in the sea, and uh, it was it was being washed by the waves. Now the waves were not big; the waves were 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 very gentle as they lapped up onto the beach. But actually, there's the position. In fact, I'm not even convinced whether the crab was alive or not. It may have been the empty shell of another of a of a crab because they they shed their skin, don't they? Uh, a very small crab. Uh, it was moving, but uh, I wasn't entirely sure whether it was just moving with the sea or whether it was actually uh, trying to fight against the sea, uh, and, but still moving with the sea. Why? Because, well, the, the, the wave, even though it was small, was more powerful than the, the even smaller crab. Yeah, and it's interesting, but it, it's inter it was interesting to watch it just for a little while because why it, wherever the sea went it moved and it, it sort of had no power of its own to do anything else uh, if it was dead i mean the amazing thing was that the, the power of the sea made it look alive again you see well it's moving it's like oh it's its legs are moving and it's like you know and it, or is it just or is it just moving because the waves are moving its legs i don't know you know it's hard I didn't pick it up, so I don't know. So. <laughs> but it's like, it's interesting that, yeah, uh, wow, uh, even the dead moves. <laughs> you know, it's like, wow, yes. Uh, but the inconstant man, inconsistent man, uh, gets moved around by, uh, by, uh, by a fatalistic world by a world of shifting views and a world of shifting opinions it's like oh you know I'm tossed by the sea I'm tossed by a wave and it's like oh I don't know whether I believe or not do we believe tonight do we take God at his promise or are we going to be moved by the, the sea by the change by uh, oh I'm not sure by the outward circumstance well, I trust God that this is the right thing to do, but if if um, the circumstances um, change to that degree, I start to doubt whether it's the right thing to do or not. Um, I 
I believe God's law, but if um, the laws of the land change to such a degree whereby they are reversed, then maybe I change my thinking along with the laws of the land rather than the laws of God. You know, no, actually, we want to take a stand. We believe God. We trust God. Uh, we believe Him. Uh, even though it looks impossible, even though it goes against the laws of the land, even though it goes against the laws of nature. Think about that, that the, the Jesus was there walking on the sea. And it's like, well, the, it goes against the, the natural laws. It goes against everything we know. But Jesus was there walking on the sea. Do we trust him? Be of good cheer. It's I. Do we trust him? Or do we actually... Or we do, do we actually uh, just get washed around by the sea a bit ourselves, uh, tossed up and down, and, and it's like, oh, no, we we have a God who who overcomes the natural, who doesn't obey the the natural laws of the or the way of this world, who has some uh, a supernatural output, a supernatural uh, viewpoint. Uh, the God who is different from the world around. Wow. <laughs> yes, Jesus does this miracle. Peter says, uh, you know, uh, can I be involved? Yes, if you want to be involved, you can be involved. You know what, as well, that, that is a picture of us as believers. Uh, I always love this. It's a picture of God's grace. Because Peter, what does he do when he steps onto the water? He knows that it's impossible. He knows that it doesn't make any sense. He knows that he's doing something that he can't actually do. That it's it's impossible for him to do, and he and that there's no way he could normally do that. We ourselves, we know our sin. We know our failure, we know our wickedness, we know all of the things that, that keep us away from God. But we also know that actually God is gracious. We know that Christ died for us. We know that Christ paid a price for sin. So our sin is paid for and we are made righteous. Now maybe we know that, but deep down we still have this doubt, this fear that actually it's not right, it's not fair, I can't say this, I can't do this, I can't live my life like this, because it, it's because I know that I'm a sinner. Can you approach the throne of the Holy God? Well, I know I can't do this, it's not right. It's good. Could I pray, could I ask for things? For I, could I ask God to do things for me and give me things as if God was my servant? Crazy. But God says, no, ask, ask things of me. I want to bless you. And it's like, well, but I can't do this. This is impossible. Yeah, it's impossible, but Jesus was walking on the water. And Peter was walking on the water with him. And it says there, Peter walked on the water. Wow. It's grace. The thing that we could never do of ourselves. Well, actually, you know what? Really, Peter w was doing it. He was just working very hard to stay on the surface of the water. He was going very, very hard. He was, he was putting all of his effort into it to make sure that he stayed on the surface of the water. No, it's rubbish, isn't it? That's crazy. No, it, it, that's impossible. How could that ever be? It had to be a hundred percent the Lord Jesus Christ. It had to be a hundred percent him. Peter can't walk on water. And Peter knows that he can't walk on water. But looking at Jesus Jesus says, come, do the impossible. 
Let's do the impossible together. You can be part of my miracle. But actually, you, uh, yeah, you have to rely 100% on me. Not look at yourself. Not look at the circumstances. Not look at the impossibility of it. But trust me. Live by faith. Look to me only. Don't look around. Don't look at the wind. You look at the wind, you'll fall. Don't look at yourself. You look at yourself, you'll sink. Don't look at your own ability. That's no part of this. Our own ability has nothing to do with the mirac miracles of God. Our own ability has no place in this. This is the work of God. Our flesh has no place in our salvation. Our flesh has no place in our sanctification. Our, our flesh has no place in our walk with God at all. It's a completely perfect, holy, new walk of God that He gives us, that He does. It's the finished work of Jesus Christ. Proverbs 25 19 says confidence in an unfaithful man in a time of trouble is like a broken tooth and a foot out of joint wow that's nice isn't it broken tooth we know what that feels like maybe if you have a broken tooth uh, a foot out of joint could we do that could we ever turn our ankle as we're walking down the stairs or something like that and it's like, oh, okay, and we know what it's like. It's painful. Uh, it's painful, and, it, and, it, and it's unreliable. And really, that's what it says. You know what? If we rely on our, on our flesh, we rely on an unfaithful man. This is our, this is what our life will be. It will be a life of pain and discomfort. A life where we can't do the things that we 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 want to do. But we say, no, I'm going to trust in the living God. I'm going to have faith only in Jesus. I'm only going to look to Him. You know, this is it. That's all. Look to the Lord Jesus Christ. I always used to wonder, you know, why did Jesus do this miracle? Um, you know, is it in character? Walking on the water. Yes, it's impossible. Yes, it's an illustration of uh, how we can trust him. It's a very, very elaborate illustration. Wow. Is that the only reason, maybe? Was it a party piece? Did Jesus want to show off? It's like, look at me, look at me, look, I can walk on water. I can do something that nobody else can well, it's certain actually that Jesus could do things that nobody else could do because he only could pay the price for sin. That's true. Uh, yes, he could, uh, he could certainly do things that no one else could do because he could open the eyes of the blind. He could raise the dead. Yes, it's something worth looking at. Jesus, but was that it? Was that all, all that this was about? Was it a, a, an elaborate il illustration? Of, look, you can do the impossible if you trust me. Or is it something more than that? You know, the clue is in the end of the story. In verse 33 that we read, it says, Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth, thou art the Son of God. There's more to this, actually, than just the miracle itself. This is actually a fulfillment of prophecy. This is actually a, a fulfillment of God's word. This is actually a messianic. You're thinking, well, where does that say that? We need to go back to the book of Job. The book of Job, chapter 9. 
Job is talking about the wonders of of God the Father as he knew him by the, uh, back then um, and it says uh, actually verse 2 it says I know it is so of a truth but how should man be just with God if he will contend with him he cannot answer him one of a thousand he is wise in heart and mighty in strength who hath hardened himself against him and hath prospered which removeth the mountains and they know not which overturneth them in his anger think about that as well for a minute Jesus says if we have faith as a mustard seed we could remove mountains and this is what Job is saying that the Messiah would do uh, in verse 6 which shaketh the earth out of her place and the pillars thereof tremble which commandeth the sun and it riseth not and sealeth up the stars and again it's like well uh, you know when uh, was it Hezekiah asked for a sign wasn't it and the sundial went backwards and it's like wow yeah is it a small thing the sundial goes backwards um, Joshua needed a battle to be ended and the, the sun stood still in the heavens it's like wow God can do that verse 8 which alone spreadeth out the heavens the Lord has spread out the heavens it says that he'll roll them up as a scroll or as a garment at the end of time and then it says and treadeth upon the waves of the sea wow that's it that's what we have that's what we have here a God who treads upon the waves of the sea so actually way back in the book of Job one of the first books of the Bible written Job is saying well this is our God he, he created the heavens he rolled it all out but also he walks on the sea he's able to walk on the sea so when Jesus came to the earth what did he do he opened the eyes of the blind that was a sign of the Messiah only he raised the dead he, he healed the lame and the deaf and the, and the dumb and it's like yes these were all signs of the Messiah but actually you know what another sign of the Messiah another proof that this was this was God the same God as God the Father the same God as the Creator was that yes he can move mountains he can spread out the heavens and he's able to walk on the sea Jesus was doing this as a proof of his Godhead to his disciples as a proof of his ultimate power and control and as a proof that actually the grace of God would be all powerful that it would be reliant, reliable that it would be all encompassing and the result was when they saw it they said yeah this is the son of God truly this is the son of God we know you now or we recognize you so that was uh, that was the conclusion of the disciples it's our conclusion also that we come to the living God we come to a God who is able to do all of the things that we can't do but a God who is also able to help us and enable us to do things that we could never do we can call God Father. We can be seated in heavenly places. 
we can be sinless we can be forgiven we can be perfect we can preach the word to others we can proclaim that uh, God is powerful and mighty we can give people a testimony that our life has been changed and that our life is different from what it was before why? because we have a God of the impossible we have a God we actually spiritually we walk on water every day we walk by faith not by sight we walk in his ways we walk in the light we walk in, uh, by grace this is how we live our life this is our reality we do the impossible the very things that we could never do in our flesh uh, in our natural man and if we're only looking at ourselves well we'll never be able to do these things but if we look at the Lord Jesus Christ we trust him alone we don't know the miracles that he can do in our life let's pray Heavenly Father we thank you Lord we worship you we love you tonight and we thank you Lord that you're the God of the impossible and you're the God who does things that shock us and surprise us maybe even scare us by their power but Lord you do this to bless us you do this so that we can be of good cheer that we can be rejoicing in who you are and Lord you do it to show us your grace that actually our life is impossible our life in Christ is impossible can we be filled with the Spirit of God as a sinful man? Yes, we can. Can we be completely forgiven and spotless, presented blameless? Yes, we can be. Not because of ourselves, not because of our weakness and our failure and our sin, but because of the cleansing power of the Lord Jesus Christ and because of what you have accomplished by the finished work of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for Calvary. Thank you, Lord, for the empty tomb. Thank you, Lord, for every part of what you've done for us, Lord. Thank you for the power of it. Thank you for the reality of it. Lord, guide us, fill us, use us, Lord, we pray. Thank you that we can trust you. Thank you, Lord, that you love us. Give us your wisdom now, Lord. We pray if there's anyone out there who's never trusted Christ as Savior and who doesn't know that they can be different, they could even do the impossible as we think of it Lord we pray that this would be the day that they say Lord I need you, I desire you I need you to clear up uh, the mess of my life but I thank you Lord that you are prepared to do that thank you Lord that you are able to do that thank you Lord that you have already done that thank you Lord that I can already be forgiven the minute I come to you I draw near to you and say, Lord, forgive me, heal me, renew me, strengthen me. The minute that I receive Christ, and the minute that I fellowship with Christ, I can be forgiven and restored. Thank you, Lord. We worship you now, Lord. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your awesome power. And we thank you, Lord, that you desire to be part of our lives. That you involve us in your miracles. That we can do the impossible. That we would be able to do great things by you, Lord. By looking to you, by focusing our eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ. Not on circumstances, not on ourselves. But just on you, Lord. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, it's been good to be together. Good to see a few friendly faces tuning in there. Um, we'll see you again, God willing, on Sunday. Uh, and uh, in the meantime, uh, God bless and, and bye for now.